So we're changing gears a little bit and moving from praying uh, for the salvation of our loved ones to using the name of Jesus in prayer. John chapter 16, verse 23 says, And in that day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be filled. Now let me give you a little background of what's happening here. Jesus is talking right here. He's talking to his disciples. John chapter 16. Uh, actually all the way from uh, the end of chapter 13 through uh, 17. Jesus is really teaching his disciples a lot of things that, are, that have happened and are about to happen. He's just telling, him, telling his disciples that I'm going to leave you. I'm going away. And, and it, it really disturbed the disciples. I mean, they're just beginning to get an understanding. It's been about three years with them. Uh, they've been kind of dunderheads, really. I mean, if you read, the, read through the Gospels, I mean, they're kind of thick-headed. And Jesus would get frustrated with them. And they're finally getting to the point where they're understanding what's going on here. And, and, and they're kind of getting to like what's the lifestyle that they're having running around with Jesus. And... Uh, being a part of the ministry that Jesus had. And all of a sudden, Jesus stands up and says, hey, I'm, I'm leaving you guys, I'm going. What? And so he begins to tell them, it's, it's expedient, it's absolutely necessary I go away because until I go away, the Comforter will not come, another Comforter is going to come. He starts talking about the Holy Spirit. He said, the works that, that I do, you shall do, and even greater works than these you will do. So he's teaching all these things. And, and then right in the middle of all this, he, he interjects this this thought, verse 23 and 24, he says, and in that day, and the day that he's talking about is the day that he actually goes to be with the Father, resurrection, ascension in, into the heavenly places. He says, in that day you will ask me nothing. Go back to chapter 14 for a second, because we'll bring some clarification here of proper protocol and, and process for prayer here. Chapter 14, verse 12 says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me the works that I do, he will also do, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in me, I will do it. Now, right here, Jesus is talking about what's been happening up to this time. He says, up to this time, he says, you've been asking me, and I do it for you. He says, I'm the one that's been, been doing these things for you. He said, but I'm going to go to my Father. Things are going to change. I'm not going to be around anymore for you to ask me to do anything. I'm not going to be here to do anything for you. So here in chapter 16, he says, now in that day when I'm gone, here's, what, here's the way it's going to work. He says, you're going to have to ask the Father. You're not going to ask me anymore. You're going to have to ask the Father. But you ask the Father in my name, and He, the Father, will do it for you. See, I've been doing it for you. I've been here. I've been doing it for you. But I'm not going to be here anymore. I can't do it for you anymore. But don't, don't worry about it. The Holy Spirit's going to come. He's going to be here to help you. He's going to comfort you. He's going to teach you. He's going to lead you into all things. And he says, also, when you pray, you can pray straight to the Father in my name, and He will do what you ask. Now, this is revelation. Because, you see, up to this time, nobody had access to the Father. Understand... The, the, the teaching of the Jewish people at the time, they had to go to the priest. And the priest is the only one that had access to the Father. This was, this was totally foreign to them. But now they understood that Jesus was the Son of God, that He was God. And so they've been, I mean, they were face to face with, with Jesus and asking the things that, that they needed. And Jesus was doing things. He was turning water into wine. He was healing the sick people. He was turning a couple of fish and a few loaves of bread into all the food that they needed. He said, go down to the fishing hole and pull out the fish and you'll get a gold coin in it. I mean, it's great. <laughs> Man, everything they need. Jesus is taking care of Jesus. We, we, we need a place to stay. Well, just go down there and, and they'll have a place. Uh, go down there and get the colt and bring it down. I mean, everything, they're just that and Jesus is there. Now, I'm going to be gone. 
So for us to understand the setting of this, it's important because, I mean, it's, it's like, whew, what is going on? I'm not going to be here. I'm going. He said, but I've got good news. It's going to be much better. There's going to be a comforter that comes, the Holy Spirit that comes. And now when you pray, pray to the Father in my name. So when we pray, it's important to understand now we are asking the Father. When we pray a prayer petition, when we're asking for things that we need according to His Word, remember, in order to have faith, we've got to know it's His will, and the best way to know it's His will is it's in the Word. But when we find it in the Word, when we pray, we go, Father, in the name of Jesus. Now, why is that important? Because our access to the Father is through Jesus. See, Jesus now... When he ascended, he went into the Holy of Holies and put his blood upon the altar and he, through that process, brought down the veil that was between man and God, man and the Father. And now because of what Jesus did, we have access to the Father. I'm not sure we understand fully what a privilege we have. We can come boldly, Hebrews says, Hebrews chapter 4, to the throne of grace. We can come boldly before the Father. Based on your righteousness, based on what you've done, based on your good works, no. Based upon what Jesus did. And our faith in what Jesus did. Principle of prayer. We ask the Father in the name of Jesus. We use the name of Jesus in prayer. He says, John 16 says, Until now, you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be filled. Most surely I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, He will give it to you. There's power in the name of Jesus. Look at Philippians chapter 2. Quickly, I want to share a couple more things on the principle of using the name of Jesus. That name, why? What is it about the name? Look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. It says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. This mind being the same attitude. Who being in the form of God, talking about Jesus now, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself to, of no rep reputation, taking the form of a servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name. Everybody say the name. He's given him the name which is above every name. What's that name? It's the name of, everybody say it, Jesus. And that, at that name every knee shall bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hebrews 1.4 says, He has been given a more excellent name. He's obtained a more excellent name excellent name. The name of Jesus. The name that's above every name. The name that every knee will bow and every tongue confess. That name of Jesus. There's power in that name. Look at Mark 16. What I mean? There's power in that name. Look at Mark 16. Verses we're very familiar with, but let's look at it in the context of what we're sharing here about the name of of Jesus. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. And in my name, what name? Jesus. And in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. It's in the name of Jesus that the power and the anointing of God is released to minister 
salvation, to minister healing, to minister deliverance. It's in the name of Jesus. There's power in that name, the name above every name. Now, for us to be able to use that name and release the power of that name, it only flows out of relationship with Jesus. And you've got to understand, you've got to catch this. Most people see the revelation of the name of Jesus and, and the power in that name. Those within the Christian walk. But they don't understand that it's only out of relationship that we can actually release the power of that revelation. I don't have time to turn there. You can look there. Now, but in Acts chapter 19, there's a, a story about the sons of Sceva who got this revelation about the name of Jesus. And so they're going to just cast out some demons. And so they walk up to this the situation and they begin to speak to these demons and the demons look at him and say Jesus we know Paul we know but who are you they didn't have the revelation of the relationship they didn't have that relationship where the power is they could Speak the name of Jesus all day and nothing happens. It's only out of that relationship that gives you that ability and for God to release the power and the anointing in that name. Who are you? And so you, you may have been standing out here trying to cast demons out or do something in the name of Jesus and nothing happening. My question to you is, what's the relationship you have with Jesus? Because it's out of that relationship that will flow. See, the centurion understood that. He was in submission to authority. He said, only speak the word and my servant would be healed. He had a relationship. He knew it. Turn to John chapter 15 real quick. John 15. And we'll close here. Stop for the day. John 15, verse 7. What do I mean Relationship. Why is relationship important? I want, I want to flow in the, in the anointing of God. I want to release the power that's in His name. Chapter 15, verse 1, it says, I'm the true vine, my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me does not bear fruit, He takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, He prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch can bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I'm the vine, you're the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. How many of you want to bear much fruit? Well, the key is abiding in him. For without me you can do nothing. But Philippians 4.13 says, In him we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Verse 6, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. Verse 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. If you abide in me, the key to using the name of Jesus is abiding in him. Relationships, there's power in the name of Jesus. When we ask the Father in his name, all heaven breaks loose in our lives. Stand up. Feel that